In today's video, I'll be sharing how I made this painting along with some of the fundamentals and process. So feel free to paint along and let's get into it. All right, so before we start off, I'll share the canvas information. This is a 3000 pixel canvas by a 3850 pixel canvas. And the color profile is an sRGB, as you can see here. The brushes that I'll be using are mainly going to be from the Creative Space Basics brush pack. Uh, this is a brush pack that's free on my Patreon. It's free for everybody. Um, I'll leave the link in the description. It's just these eight brushes, some of which are very similar to things that you can find in Procreate, for example, the airbrush or the round brush. But a few of them are just custom brushes that I wanted to include uh, that I like to paint with. So with that said, let's get into it. So the first thing I want to do here is I'm going to take this color palette and I'm going to just keep it at the top right just so it's accessible. I'm going to choose a blue color here. So somewhere around here, it doesn't have to be exactly the blue that I choose, but just make sure that we have a blue color selected and I want it to be a lighter, less saturated blue. So I'm going to pull this up to about up here, pretty light, pretty desaturated. I'll go to the brushes and I'm going to select an airbrush and I'm just going to paint in the whole canvas with this blue color. And so this will be the sky. So we're on layer one. This is going to be the very bottom layer, the sky layer. And then what I'll do is get a lighter white color and I'll paint in the middle part of the canvas here. Just this horizontal streak. Again, just using the airbrush to get in this uh, this gradient. So now we have a gradient from these blues up here in the sky down into these whites down here in the middle. And just make sure it's a soft transition. If you need to, you can sample some of the blue up here and just kind of paint back down into the whites uh, just to ensure that it's a nice and soft gradual transition. So now that we have the sky layer in, we'll go to the layer panel and make a new layer above it. And I'm going to select the flat paint brush, which is just a horizontal tipped brush. So uh, it's locked horizontally. So if I paint horizontally, we get these thin paint strokes. And if I paint vertically, we get these thicker paint strokes. That's basically uh, all there is to it. It's got a little paint painterly texture to it, but I'll be using this brush to get in some grass in the very far background of the scene. So I'm going to choose a warmer color and maybe like an orange, yellow, yellow, orange, warm color here. And we want it to be less saturated since it's further in the scene, further back in the scene, something up here, this kind of mid-toned color. And I'm going to start to paint just above halfway up the canvas. So about right here. And I'll just paint this horizontal paint stroke going across the screen. And I'll fill in everything below it using this color. And now we have this orange rectangle or square on the bottom portion of the screen. Now that we have this shape in, I'll make a new layer above that. And I'm going to select a green, warmer yellow green color. And we'll just bring this to about maybe here. So it's just a little darker as well. It's about in the middle of the color palette here. And I'm going to go towards the uh, horizon line here, which is where this top of the orange, this orange square is. I'll go just under that and start to paint in with this green color and have it kind of curve down towards the bottom left. So something like this. And we'll just fill that shape in as well. Not worrying about any detail or any form right now. We're just getting in the main major elements of the scene, keeping them on separate layers so that we can uh, we can add detail to them later. But again, just worrying about the shapes right now. So now what we can do after this is go and make a new layer above layer three. And this is going to be for the foreground, which is going to be the element of the scene that's closest to the viewer. So I will sample this orange color that we painted in for that background grass. And I'm going to make it darker and more saturated. Not too much, um, not too drastic with these changes, but um, and maybe I'll make it more yellow as well. And I will just paint this in maybe a little lighter than that. I'll just paint in at the bottom of the screen here, this kind of curved um, bottom right part of the screen. And now we have a foreground. And now that we have these elements in, I'm noticing maybe this green hill could be, the shape could be refined a little bit. So I'll just go to layer three and just add more to the shape. 
you might not need to do this uh, if your shapes look good, but I just uh, wanted to clean that up a bit. So now we have these four layers. We've got the sky, and then we've got these uh, kind of background, mid-ground, and foreground. Now I wanna get some trees in this scene. So I'll go to layer one and I'll make a new layer above layer one. So it's gonna be below all of these uh, three grass layers. We're gonna sample this green here that we used for the, uh, for the mid ground hill layer. And I'm gonna pull it less saturated and darker. So somewhere about here, I think should be good. And I'm gonna shift the color towards the left to, to have it more of a warmer orange color. And I'll select the flat paint too, which is the same thing as the flat paint brush, except it follows the stroke. Um, whatever direction you paint, the tip of the brush will follow that. Same brush, it just acts differently. And so now with this warmer, desaturated, almost like a brown color selected, I'm gonna paint along the horizon here, some tree shapes. I don't want them to be too tall. They're in the very far background. I just want to get some indication that there's trees back there. And I want some size variety and shape variety as well. So for example, I don't want them to be all like, I think this, what I just did here is repetitive. It's got the same shape everywhere. Um, you know, it's got that kind of re repetitive pattern. But if we can try to try to throw some variety in there, so have some areas that are lower, like right here, maybe it could be lower maybe like right here as well. And if you get some shape variety and size variety of these trees, they'll feel more natural and they'll feel more believable and less repetitive. So I'd say something like this is good. And I think these trees right here, I think we can, um, we don't need to worry about this portion too much because I think we're gonna end up blocking it anyway with some trees that I'll get in later. but. With this, for now, it's good. Um, it's just the shape. We're not worrying about form or details or anything. Again, we'll get to that later. What we're doing in this portion is really just building up the overall shapes and silhouettes of the composition. So we really are putting together like the pieces of the puzzle. And then we can detail those pieces of the puzzle later on and make them feel more three-dimensional and believable. But for right now, we'll get some more trees in the scene. So I'll go to layer two and I'll make a new layer above it. And I will take this color that we had and I'm going to push it more towards the greens. And I want it to be slightly darker because these trees are going to be closer to the viewer. And the closer things are in a scene, usually they are slightly darker because of the less atmospheric perspective and, uh, and all that. So I'm still using the flat paint too. I'm going to go to about... I'd say two thirds up on this orange uh, grass that we painted. So about right here. And I'll just draw a horizontal line going across the scene like this. And this is just gonna help me kind of figure out where to place these trees and so that they have like a structured base. And so we can start, I'll start on this left side here. We're just gonna start with some smaller bushes or maybe just some smaller trees. And again, just try to have some nice variety to them. So like right here, they'll maybe dip down and be really small. And then maybe we can have like a bigger tree right here. So very similar to the approach that we used for the background trees. And as we get further towards the right side of the screen, these trees can get bigger. Um, so maybe something like this. And with these, with these shapes, try not to do, uh, try not to have any tangents in here. And if you don't know what a tangent is, it's basically like if I was to have, a, if I was going to paint a tree in this area, I wouldn't want the tree, the top of the tree to do this. So it's basically touching this line right here, the bottom of these background trees. And if we zoom out, it's hard to tell what's in front and what's behind everything kind of, it kind of feels like these trees are sitting on top, um, these right here are sitting on top of this tree. And so try to avoid things like this. And so we can do two things to avoid that. We can either have this tree overlap and now it feels like that tree is in front and it's closer to us and it has an overlap uh, so that depth reads well. Or what we, what we can do is erase the top part and just have the tree not come up uh, to meet that point. So we can do one of two things. 
in that scenario. So uh, just try to keep that in mind. Tangents can really flatten out an image and make things feel really, really flat and like they don't have any depth to it. So that is something that um, that I just want to point out in case, you know, you accidentally make that mistake. And, and sometimes they're easy. Sometimes it's easy to to make that mistake as well. So just try to keep an eye out for those tangents. All right, now that we have a silhouette that looks good for these trees, I'll make some more trees, uh, this time even closer to the viewer. So I'll make a new layer above layer six. And I'm going to make this green color even darker since we're getting even closer to the viewer. And I'm going to start on this right side right here and just paint in some more tree shapes. You can use a round brush to do this. You can use, uh, if you're using my brush pack, I'm using this flat paint too, still using that brush, just getting in some shapes for these trees. And then I can also add some more down here at the bottom left behind this hill, right? So these trees are like right up behind, um, behind this green hill. All right. And the shapes are always subject to change. So if you feel like later on you want to change the silhouettes or if you need to adjust them, that's fine. We can, always, since we're on separate layers, we can always, you know, go in and change things. So we don't need to worry about it too much right now in the beginning but just to kind of get the placement in so we know how things are going to look and feel in the overall composition. All right, so now that we have these three layers of trees in, I'm going to start to get more form onto the scene. So we have all the elements, really, uh, the major elements of the scene. We've got the grass, trees, and the sky, and we have them all on separate layers, so they're easily manageable, and we're able to change things pretty easily. And so now would be a good time to establish the lighting in the scene. So we'll have the lighting coming in from the left side of the screen like this, right, coming in from this way. And which means this will, uh, the lighting will be hitting the left sides of these trees like this and of this hill, right? So this left side of the hill will get some of this lighting here and along here. And so that means that the back sides, right, like so, um, this back side of the hill will get some shadow. The right sides of the trees will get shadow. And so lighting is going to be really important to establish before we start getting in form and detail because it's going to dictate how the form looks. So we don't want some trees to be lit on the left side like this, right? And then like other trees back here to be lit on the right side. That would be an inconsistency of lighting and it wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense we'd have like, we'd have to have like two light sources for that, like two suns, and that just wouldn't make sense. So establish the lighting, make sure that we have the lighting established whenever you're um, about to get into form and all of that. And that will really, should really help out. Now that we know where the lighting's coming from, we can start to get in some form. I'll go to layer three and I will select the flat paintbrush and I'm gonna sample this green color just to have a base color to start off of, and then we can kind of move out from that color. So sample this color, and I'm gonna go a little bit darker and a little less saturated, and I'll push the color to the right, this color slider to the right, more into the greens. We'll start to paint in with this color. This should be fine here. Just paint this kind of curved paint stroke like this. And so what this is, is basically like a dip down from the hill. So this left side of the hill right here, I want to get um, some lighting along this side here. And then it's going to start to curve down and then we're going to have like this shadow along this side. And you'll start to see it, it should make more sense the more that I paint this in. Right now it's, you know, not too detailed. We didn't get much form in here yet, but Hopefully it will start to make more sense. I'm going to use the erase tool and just clean up some of the edges of this hill as well. I may do that um, from time to time. So if you see me do that, uh, just know that you may not need to, depending on how your hill looks. And I will just get some of the shadow in here along the grass. Maybe I can introduce a darker value as well. Try not to get too complicated with your values. The more colors and values really in general, the more that you start to add to the piece, the more complicated it will get. So we don't want things to become too complicated, especially early on. 
So I'm just trying to be careful with with that and stay conscious of, you know, what I add and where I add it. So I'll actually just fill in this whole right side of the um, of the hill here with this green color. And maybe we can select an airbrush and I'm going to sample this green color, make it a little darker, maybe push it towards the blues and just paint in um, kind of just to have a deep transition. Like as we go deeper down, uh, the hill starts to slope down even more. That would mean that less sunlight gets through down here in this uh, bottom part. And I'll get some lighting in on this left side. So I'll select a warmer yellow color and we'll just paint some of this lighting hitting it. Especially along the edge, the light's gonna pick up and just make sure that they're warm colors. So along the left side of this grass hill, we want these to be warmer yellows and, um, and oranges even, and just warmer greens. And then as we start to get towards this area, the right side, it's, they're gonna be cooler greens and cooler, um, less saturated greens. And I'll select the round brush. And this round brush is nice because uh, it has pressure opacity. So if you lightly press, you can lightly get like a wash and you don't have to have like a complete opaque color and you can really control the uh, the buildup of the gradient here. And it's not as soft as an airbrush. So it's like kind of a harder gradient, which might not be for everybody, but I kind of like how that looks. And just keep on building up some details now, start getting into some, you know, introducing a darker value here and building up maybe some grass details along the shadow side of this hill. At this point, uh, it can start to feel like things aren't working out or like it's just not looking how you want it to. And so maybe you decide to give up at that point. You'd be surprised a lot of times it can work out if you stick with it and just and just keep working on it because it takes time to build it up, right? It just It's not gonna just magically look good or magically come together, right? It, it takes time and it just takes patience. And that in itself is a skill to learn and is something that takes a lot of, uh, a lot of practice, right? I'm trying to stay conscious of how much detail I add because this hill isn't the closest thing to the viewer and we don't want it to be too noisy or too detailed. And the more little small paint strokes we add, like I, like how I'm doing right now, starting to add more detail. And that's why I keep zooming out and flipping the canvas to see like, is that too much? Does it look good? And kind of evaluate how, uh, how that all looks. Because if, if I stay zoomed in like this, I can start to lose sight of the bigger picture. So it's good to stay kind of zoomed out or at least to zoom out from time to time to see how things look. And also to just flip the canvas horizontally, that can be, be really helpful. All right, so I'll actually go up to the adjustments tab here. I'm still working on the detail and all that, but I'm noticing that I think the color could be a little more rich. So I'll go up to the adjustments tab and I'll tap on the hue, saturation and brightness sliders, and I will increase the saturation by about three or f I'll do maybe 5% is good. And then I'll shift the hue slider to the left, which is going to just make everything a little warmer. And I'll do that to about maybe 48%. Yeah, 48% should be good. And so now things feel slightly warmer and more colorful as well. All right, I'm going to grab an airbrush and sample this lighter yellow orange color and just I actually make a new layer above layer three and I'll tap on that layer and tap on clipping mask. So now that everything we paint uh, has to show up only within that, that shape. And I'm, I have an airbrush selected, sample this warm color here, and I'm just gonna slightly paint this area just to have more of like a glow kind of, or like a transition into the green. So it's not as hard or harsh of a cutoff. Um, so something kind of like that. And if you do too much, since we're on a separate layer, we can turn down the opacity if we need to. So I'll just turn down my opacity to about 60%. You could also erase some out if you want to just erase some using the airbrush. And I'll do the same thing, except just sample this darker color and just kind of maybe make it even darker and just paint in along the very bottom here. All right, now we have this 
shape, uh, this uh, form kind of on a hill. So it looks, it's looking okay. There's still more that I want to do to it later, but right now I think it's okay to move on. So we start to see more of the scene develop and we don't get stuck on just one element. So I'll move to layer two, which is the, this um, background grass. And I'll sample this color that we used for it. And I'm going to make it less saturated and darker. And I'm just going to paint horizontally these horizontal uh, streaks uh, right below these trees. And this can kind of be like the shadow of these trees on the grass. So something like that should be good. And I'll do the same thing uh, back here as well, except I'll make it more of a saturated orange, maybe a little lighter and just paint in these horizontal streaks like that. And I'm keeping these paint strokes horizontal because it helps with the depth, helps things feel uh, like they're receding back into space. And the further back we get, the thinner these paint strokes should be. So just try to keep that in mind. And maybe I'll get like a darker value in there as well. So maybe just a couple of those. Okay, so that reads well to me. Um, I will do a little bit more here, this part that's closer to us. And this is just really helping without having to do too much and add in a ton of detail. It's just an easy way to get the indication of maybe like maybe some rows of like crops or some fields or something like that. All right. And I think that's good for now. Again, we can always come back to it later, but I just want to see how everything else develops and starts to build up before we spend too long on one particular area. So now we can move to the foreground. Um, I'll go to layer four, which is our foreground layer, the shape that we've made. And I will make a new layer above it. And just to keep things clean in case we make some mistakes, we can go back and uh, undo or erase and we don't have to affect anything below it. Uh, so layer nine above layer four, I'm gonna choose the flat paintbrush. I'm gonna sample this orange color that I've gotten in already. And I'm going to start to paint with a slightly darker and less saturated orange on top of it. And along the edge of the shape here, I'm just kind of having these vertical quick paint strokes. And you can see I'm getting some of this grass shape in here. And that's just part of this brush that I have. Um, again, they're free on my Patreon. You can feel free to download them there. They work in Procreate. I'm not sure about other softwares. So you, you may just have to test that out, but they are free and they do work in Procreate. And so I'm just building up some form and texture onto this grass. Maybe we can get more of like a green in here. So I'll shift the color more towards the greens and make it a little darker, a little darker than that. Something about here should be fine. And just get maybe some little patches of grass that are, uh, that are more of a green color. Another thing we can do is um, there's a brush in Procreate is a default brush and we can go to the, uh, it's in the inking section. It's called the thylacine brush, this one here. It's like a rake brush. We can make a new layer and above everything just because we're adding some extra details and uh, we can use the thylacine brush to paint in some grass shapes. So like I'll sample this green and I'll just paint these kind of vertical paint strokes in here. And that just kind of gives this, uh, kind of this indication of grass. And I'll do this as well along this edge right here. What I'm going to do is uh, select a like a pink color, maybe like a light pink like this. And I will do that maybe a little more saturated than that. And yeah, I'll do this along the edges here just to get maybe like some flowers or some grass right there along the edges. Don't want to do too much of it. So I'm just doing uh, some small like pockets of it, right? Along the, uh, like right here and right here, right here. Um, but don't want to do too much of that. And the closer to the camera, the bigger these strokes can get. So we can increase the size of the brush and just um, paint some more of that. And this could be any color you want if you want it to be like purple or blue or something. As long as the values are good and that it, they, that, that it reads well, then it should be good. So I'll go back to layer nine uh, which is like the grass layer that we were working on. And I'll go back to the flat paintbrush and continue to work on this grass. I'm getting some lighter yellows in here now. Maybe like more of a green yellow, yellow green. Um, just tapping some of this brush in here and I'll select the rectangle paintbrush. It's just a uh, square shaped rectangle paintbrush. 
and get in some grass shapes using this as well. And along the edges, you can have like some strokes of paint that are quite taller than the rest like this, right? And this kind of just indicates maybe some tall grass that is kind of sticking up. We gotta use the round brush here and select a purple, like a more, maybe like a cooler red color like this. And just start to get in this, um, some more grass, but like maybe a different color, like a purple kind of color. I like to get some color variety in the, in my painting. So the, um, I think this is just a good way to do that. Just have some different colored grass in here. And I'll actually, actually go make sure we're on layer nine and you're, you again, one of those things you might not have to do, but I'll go up to the adjustments and just turn down the brightness because I think mine was a little too bright. And I will also just make a new layer above it and set it to clipping mask, go to the airbrush. And I'm just going to sample this orange here and just make it much darker and just kind of softly paint along the bottom, particularly the bottom right, but all along the bottom, just to introduce a darker color down there. And I'll actually darken layer 10 as well, which is this kind of, uh, I guess these are flowers or just some grass texture. I feel like that was too light. I think that's better. So you can see a lot of it is like adjusting with the colors in particular. Um, a lot of it's adjusting on the go because I don't know exactly how these things are going to look when I get them down on the canvas. And I'll, I'll collapse layer 11 onto layer nine right here. Um, but I don't know how these things are going to look when uh, like the color, for example, the values and the um, overall color. I don't know how it's going to look immediately. So a lot of times it just takes uh, trial and error and just trying to get things down on the canvas and see, does that look good? Does it look like it needs to be lighter? And um, just kind of doing it that way. I know a lot of times when looking at a painting or when looking at like a sped up time lapse, it can, it can be like, uh, it can seem like that artist just knew what to do from the start. And maybe in some cases they do, but um, I think it's also important to show that it's not always is like, it's not always easy. And a lot of times it, it does take some, some mistakes, you know, like for example, I just made those flowers too light. Um, and I didn't know that at the time, but sometimes it just, you have to uh, get things down and just make those mistakes. So don't, don't feel discouraged if that happens. Um, it, that, that definitely happens to me. It's just part of the process, right? It's part of making art is continuing to make what you have look better and continue to try to improve what you have on your canvas. And so if it takes a little while to find that right value or that right color palette, whatever the case may be, I think that that's absolutely normal. I think that that's fine. But yeah, it can be discouraging to see like sped up time lapses and just feel like everybody knows how how to choose the perfect color immediately. But and the more that you do it, the more you will hopefully get more comfortable with uh, with getting close to the like, for example, close to the right value in the beginning, knowing like, OK, this is kind of the general range that I need to be in. Hopefully that can get more and more specific and more accurate the more that you do this. I rarely ever get like the perfect color or uh, value rather immediately. All right, and I'll make a new layer above layer 10 and I'm going to get some more of these like how we did right here, these um, like taller grass blades or whatever that may be. I'll do that as well, except this time in the foreground. So like I'll get, let's see. So like maybe right here in this bottom right or maybe in the bottom left, it doesn't really matter. I guess we can, let's just try it at the bottom left. Yeah, just these grass blades that are a little bit taller, kind of shooting up like this. And I'll do just a few right down here as well. And then what I'll do after that is just uh, use the erase tool, set it to airbrush and just like erase some of the bottom out just so it has like a, it's not as like, see right now it's kind of harsh and um, opaque and there's a lot of contrast there. So I can just take some of that out and have it kind of fade into the grass below it. And so it's still there. I still get that uh, the indication that there's the grass there, but it's not as, it's not as apparent as it was before. 
I'll make some of these uh, selections here. So I'll just choose the selection tool up there at the top left and I'll just make a selection, tap on a gray circle and you can see now it is selected. I'll do a bunch of these just to get in some grass blades around the uh, this foreground area, just in different locations. I'll have some like right here in the foreground or in the very uh, bottom part of the screen here. Once you have uh, the selections that you want, you can just um, use an airbrush and paint them in just along the tops and the bottoms of them still kind of stay uh, translucent so that they don't feel too harsh at the bottoms. And I will just keep working on this foreground grass texture. I will speed up the video uh, here, but mainly I'll be working on the form and just getting in some more grass shapes in there. Uh, before I do that though, real quick, uh, this grass brush right here that I have included in the uh, brush pack, you could also use this, uh, I forgot to mention, you can use this to get in uh, some shapes here. So like if we want to sample this yellow, we can just tap in with this brush. We can get, get some uh, some grass shapes. I might not use it too much because I feel like I already did a lot without it, but it could be a good way to get in some uh, some textures. So yeah, I will speed up the video and be back in a moment. Okay, so I'm going to use a selection tool here and I'm going to just draw in this selection for like a pathway or just like some dirt on the grass here. And then we can complete this selection and I'll go up and make a new layer above layer nine and I'll fill in the selection. I'll just use an airbrush and I will get like a um, like a gray or a brown in here, like a neutral brown and just paint this in using that color maybe like a little more saturated than that. It can get darker uh, towards the edge of the canvas as well. And we're just getting in this path along the foreground. And then we can erase some of the edges if we need to. I'll just use the round opaque brush to erase some of the edges and just add and subtract from the shape. As I mentioned earlier with the trees and all of that, just adding and subtracting to make the shape look how we want it to look. The goal is just to have this pathway that's kind of coming in from from uh, off the screen and it can kind of lead our eye um, towards this area and maybe we can have a character up here if we want but I will leave that to you if you want to add your character in there uh, later on feel free but right now we're just getting in this shape for the pathway I add some subtle detail to it as well just a little bit I don't want to do too much with that but So I'm actually going to go to layer 11 here and erase some of these, um, uh, I guess, flowers or grass strokes out. I think I did too much with it, especially in this corner right here. And I just want to just use the uh, soft airbrush to erase some of that out. I just felt like those that rake texture was a little too repetitive and too much. And it was getting too detailed, too noisy, right? depending on how much you did you might not need to do that all right and i finally have something that i think looks okay it's not perfect and i'm not completely happy with it but i'll add more to it later on um, but i think it's good to just move around on the canvas sometimes and just kind of refresh our uh just the things that we're looking at so i'll move to the trees now will go to layer seven and I want to get some form in on these trees. So uh, I'll select the round brush and um, just make sure we're on layer seven, make a new layer above that and tap on that layer and set it to clipping mask. Actually, I'll select the airbrush um, and just get a soft, darker color down here at the bottom right and really along the whole bottom side of these trees. And what this will do is just have like more of an ambient occlusion towards the bottom of the trees. Just create a, a value transition on the trees. And then along the edges of the trees, I can get a lighter, more saturated color and just paint along the edges just very slightly. Not doing too much of that. 
And this is just going to kind of uh, set the stage for what we want to do after, which is now um, make a new layer above that. Also set it to clipping mask. And now we can start painting some individual details onto the tree. So now I'll select the flat paint too and get in some details along this tree. So like I mentioned earlier, the lighting is coming from the left side of the screen, which means the left side of the trees are going to get that lighting. So I'll sample this color here, just the green color. It doesn't matter too much uh, which color we sample, but we'll just sample a green color and pull it more up to the uh, saturated area and lighter as well. And I'm going to shift it more into the yellows and I will start to paint using this yellow, more saturated color. I'll start to paint along the left sides of this tree with that of all these trees, right? So all the left sides of the trees, I want to be um, have this sunlight hitting them and I'll use the round brush as well. And I, I'll use this brush because it has pressure opacity and I can control how opaque the paint is. So it just, I feel like I have more control with a brush like this, but again, we're just getting in along mainly just the left sides of these trees. Some of this lighter yellow green color in here, and we can shift it as well. So if we want some of the trees to be like more of their local color to be more of an orange color, then we can make it uh, appear more of an orange that's being hit by the sun. So something like this, and then we can just carve out some of that that we've painted in with a darker color and build up the form that way. I'll also use the selection tool here to get in some harder edges. So like down here, maybe we can carve into this, the lighter paint that we did. We can make a selection and just paint into it like that. We don't have to though. We can do it by hand as well. And like these two trees right here, I'm gonna make them more green. And again, I'm trying not to get too detailed with it, but just detailed enough to indicate what I wanna show and for it to, to read well, for it to read like like, it, like it's a tree. And I'll switch brushes from time to time. So maybe I'll use the rectangle paintbrush. Um, maybe I'll use the flat paintbrush. It doesn't matter that much which brush you use, as long as you're just building up this form on these trees and that they feel like, uh, feel like they're three-dimensional. So I'll, I'll collapse layer 13, which is this uh, gradient that we got on the trees onto layer seven and feel free to collapse layers if um, if they're getting in the way or if you feel like you may not need them anymore. Um, I often will collapse layers just to save space and to clean up my workspace. So, um, yeah, do feel do whatever makes you feel comfortable in that regard. And along the base of these trees, I have this desaturated pretty dark green right here and that's just a maybe i can make it even darker than that it's just to get like maybe some small bushes or some um some plants down there at the base of the tree okay so these trees are starting to look more three-dimensional and um they're starting to look a little better here i'll now move on to the trees behind them so layer six we can do the same thing to layer six just make a new layer above it set it to clipping mask and I'll just sample like a color that we've used already, like this darker green color right here. And we can paint in some of the shadows there. I'm just using an airbrush to do this, just to, kind of similar to what we did before, just create that shadow gradient. And then I'll sample this lighter yellow color here and just paint along the edges as well, just to complete the, uh, the lighter side of the gradient. And then we'll get in there with a round brush. I'm going to stay on layer 14, this clipping mask layer. I don't think it really matters. Uh, I don't think I need to make a new layer above it. I'll, and I'll just start painting in some of these details. And since these trees are even further back than the ones that we just painted, they should be less detailed. So I don't want to do nearly as much as what we just did there. We just want some, some indication of maybe some color variety and of some detail, but yeah, try to try to stay zoomed out. Don't, don't get too zoomed in on it because it may start to get caught up in the details. It's an easy thing to, to lose track of. Like I mentioned earlier, All 
right and now i think that is good enough for now we can always again add more later but i'll move on to layer five and i'm gonna erase some of these trees i still feel like they're a little too tall so i'll just kind of make them smaller here just kind of erase some of the tops and trying to retain some of the shape variety that i talked about earlier and now they're just closer to the horizon but see i wouldn't have known this like when i first got them in i didn't i didn't uh i couldn't have anticipated that they would have looked that big so kind of just had to make that mistake and then you know change it as part of the process all right and below this layer i'll go to layer one make a new layer above that and i'm just gonna use the flat paintbrush sample the sky color up here make it darker so maybe something like that and i'll just paint in some mountains back here just to get something back there in the very very far background and i can do that again i'll go to layer one and just do the same steps except this time uh, this one will be a little bit lighter and paint it back here and maybe back here as well and that's just going to help add more of a uh, more depth into the scene I'll actually go to the trees on layer five. Now that we have those mountains behind them, the mountains are a cooler color. They're like a blue color. So I'll go to layer five and change the color of these trees because this uh, this warm brown next to the cooler blue just doesn't feel right to me. So I'm going to shift it to be more in the blues. So something like this, maybe even lighter. And I think that that's better. And I'll just lighten the uh, tree layers as well by a little bit i think mine were too dark all right so now we have some more form and detail on most of the elements in the scene uh, what i can do is go to layer three and make a new layer above layer three and i'm going to choose the rectangle paintbrush i'm going to select a brown color here so maybe like a lighter brown like this and i want to get in some like maybe this could be like a fence or something like that going across the top of this hill so just getting in these vertical paint strokes that were along kind of the ridge of the hill right here. And maybe some of, like maybe we could have these pieces that are connected. Maybe some of them aren't connected. Maybe they broke off. So now we have some fences on that hill up there. I'll make a new layer above layer 12, so above everything. And I'm going to make that brown slightly darker. And so maybe I can get in some of these fence posts right here kind of in the foreground as well so we're just connecting the foreground to the midground and to further illustrate this i can sample this um, color that i used for the pathway right here and go back to the path layer actually we'll go to layer three and make a new layer above layer three and i can use this color to draw more of this path maybe we can have this path continue along the ridge of the hill right here and this is just showing, like I said, uh, just showing this same element, this pathway right here in the midground. So now we kind of have this connected feel. And then I'll go above layer 16, tap on a clipping mask, go to the brushes, go to the airbrush, and I will just paint just a soft, lighter part on the path itself. Just just in the areas where the lighting should be hitting it. So kind of mainly in this warmer area right here. All right, I'll go to layer one and I'm gonna make a new layer above layer one and have a round brush selected. And I'll just sample the sky color, make it completely white. And I'll paint in just some graphic clouds here. Just a few clouds up there at the top right. And I'll go above that layer. So above the cloud layer, I will sample this mountain color. And I just wanna get one more of these in here in the very, very far background. And maybe I can have it back over here as well. So just adding more depth to the scene with that. So I'll go back in and add some more detail and refinement to these trees, cleaning up the form, cleaning up the shapes. Most of the major parts of the scene uh, are in. And now it's just about cleaning things up, refining things, continuing to build up the form. Um, I'm pretty happy with the level of detail here. I think we could also down here at layer 15, make a new layer above that and go up to the airbrush. And I'll just sample this white up here and I'll just get a horizontal paint stroke of this white airbrush just to get like a atmosphere back there. 
in front of the mountains and I'll just smudge some of it down with an airbrush on the smudge tool. You can erase some out if you do too much, but that looks good to me. All right, and one little thing I will do just to add some some more like uh, lighting on the scene, I will make a new layer above everything and I will set it to overlay mode. So I'll tap on the letter N and I'll scroll down to overlay, make sure that I have an airbrush selected and I will choose a very warm light yellow. So maybe something like this yellow orange color. And so with this overlay mode, we're able to get a nice glow effect and I could just softly paint this in along the trees, um, along the grass and just everywhere where we think that the light will be hitting and it just creates a nice glow and enhances the lighting. If you do too much, you can turn down the opacity if you need to. You can erase some out and just play around with it until you find something that looks good. Okay, and now I'll go back to layer 19, which is this background mountain layer, and I'll make a new layer above it, set it to the airbrush, and I'll do that same thing that we did with the fog earlier, just softly paint in with a white to create like some uh, some atmosphere in front of that mountain. And I'll do it in front of layer 16 too. And I'll actually move layer 19 down a little bit here just to make it not as tall as it was. So now I'll go down to layer one and sample the sky color, the blue, and make it more saturated and use an airbrush and just paint in the top right corner of the canvas to get more color in there. I'll make a new layer above everything and just get in some birds. Just using the selection tool here to draw in some bird shapes. And then I can paint those in and now we have some birds. I'm going to get in some uh, tree branches on these mid ground trees. So I'll go up above layer 25, which is this tree layer here, make a new layer above it and get in some, uh, some tree branches. So I'll just select a neutral orange color like this. And I'm just gonna paint in some, uh, some tree branches like this. I'm not gonna do too many of them, but just enough to further illustrate that these are trees. All right, so for the most part, I think we're about good here. Um, I'll add more details and refine some of the shapes up, especially along the trees. Uh, may add some more like some rim lighting along the edges. Um, and I'll add some overlay to the foreground as well to make it a little brighter. And one other thing I'll do is clean up just the shape of the hill and make it just feel like uh, like it fits with the trees a little bit more. But again, for the most part, just small things like that. So I'll speed up the video here and let the rest of it play just in case you want to see how I do those things. Uh, but hopefully this tutorial was helpful. Thanks for watching and stay creative.